Welcome everyone to Blaster Master. I'm Narcotis. Uh, this is a game about a boy named Jason. Um, one day, Jason's frog, Fred, escapes from his fishbowl, hops outside, and then takes a hefty swig from the box of radioactive sitting in a mound of dirt. After tripling in size, Fred retreats down into the earth. Jason, more concerned about Fred than he is about the crate of radioactive waste in his yard, jumps in after Fred and discovers the dormant war tank, Sophia the Third, which he takes and suits up to battle the mutants dwelling deep inside the earth. Now tell me, that isn't the most brilliant premise for a video game you've ever heard. Let's get started. So, uh... Blaster Master, what can you say about this game? This wonderful, wonderful game. Um, it was released in 1988 uh, by Sunsoft, who no longer really does games, from what I understand. I think they do, like, uh, I don't know. They don't really make console games anymore. So, um, <clears throat> and in Japan, it was originally called uh, Cho Wasuke Senke Metafight, which translates to, like, planetary war records something something. I don't know exactly. Um, but, uh, yeah, like, the story and intro, everything was completely different. I mean, outside, I mean, from when your ship takes off, and, like, to the very end, like, everything in the side of the game is completely the same, but the story, the intro is completely different. In Japan, apparently, it was about some, uh, some, like, galactic army and they're like evil and you're now you're saving your home planet or something I don't know a lot a lot less a lot less cool <laughs> anyway <clears throat> this is one of my favorite games on the Nintendo Entertainment System if not my favorite uh, the reason I chose to play this is because first of all I love it second of all I don't feel like uh, when people think about great Nintendo games people obviously think of this one but I don't know. I don't know why I decided to play this. I just decided to play this. I love it to death. Anyway, so <clears throat> the um, the uh, core mechanics of this game, core concept, is that there's two modes. You're, there's one where you're inside a tank, like so, and then you can get out of your tank and be a little guy. You know, this is Jason in his little battle suit, rocking the style, and then you can get into these little cave areas, and then you're in like an overhead view. Which I think is pretty cool. Kind of diversifies the gameplay a bit. <clears throat> and I think it's fun. Um, so, the way this game works, there's eight distinct areas, which, you know, serve as each stage. Each area has a boss, and each boss has an item to give you. Um, some of which are significant upgrades to your tank, some of which aren't really upgrades at all. <laughs> You'll see some of that. Uh, later in the series, but for now, just know that not everything we get from the bosses is really that cool. So, <clears throat> here you can see, I'm just kind of plowing along here, plowing through everything. Um, the enemy design in this game is, uh, it's really, I don't know, it's, they made some weird choices. First of all, every single enemy in the game, um, save for a few, is in black and white. And that, that that's not including bosses. Bosses are all kinds of different colors and stuff. But all the, like, normal enemies are all gray. Like, it's all very... kind of plain, if you ask me. There are some that are, like, red, but it's all the same. Anyway, here's the first boss. This is what I call the Brain Squid. I don't know if these bosses have names. This is the Brain Squid, if I've ever seen one. Um... <clears throat> basically, you just want to shoot grenades at... Oh, don't touch them, by the way. Maybe he's a jellyfish. I don't know. So we just got our first upgrade. Oh, I wanted to note that when you're in this overhead view, you have two weapons. Your gun and your grenade. We'll talk more about that another time. For now, let's get back to it. As you can see, I'm underwater. Little guys can swim underwater. Tanks cannot. Oh, by the way, you'll notice my, uh, my gunfire has changed quite a bit. Uh, it's just because I just got the hyper. You can see that up top there, in the top in the middle of the screen. So, um, what that's going to allow us to do is destroy a certain enemy we need to kill to get past uh, and into Area 2. 
Now I want to. I wanted to make note of something here. <clears throat> These little guys don't they look like Metroids? Am I crazy? I mean, I don't know. <laughs> this was the era of early Nintendo games, you know, and this game kind of takes a lot of cues from Metroid. Not a lot. I mean, it's one of those games you might consider um, a Metroidvania, where it's you know it's kind of an open world. You collect items. You you know find. There's not really many much in terms of like secrets. You know, Metroid and Castlevania, they're all about like breaking walls and discovering stuff. This is pretty more a lot more straightforward. Anyway, here's the face wall you gotta kill. You gotta shoot it until it dies. And it's dead. On we go. Alright. We're at area two. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a good one.